You know, who knew mayonnaise would be such a hot topic headed into 2022, but personally find it gross, but that's okay. I'm going to tell you why on today's show. Also, Peach Bowl looking a little dicey for the Pittsburgh Panthers. We're going to talk about that. And more importantly, what's ahead as we go into the new year from a basketball standpoint, from a COVID standpoint, is it going to be more of the same Jersey Drake in the building? We'll have you the best bets for the hoops side of things starting now. You are Locked On ACC, your daily podcast on the Atlantic Coast Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to today's edition of Locked on ACC. Thank you for making us your first listen each and every day. Drizzy Drake, Locked on Seminoles host in the building. Everything is going down. Drizzy Drake, are you happy that it's almost 2022? Thank God, because this year <laughs> has... I, someone posted that picture of Biden at the inauguration with the uh, the mittens and everything. And I was like, oh, it's taken 11 months ago. I'm like, that feels like it was you three years You mean Bernie Sanders? Ago. Yeah, that, sorry, Bernie, Bernie Sanders. Sanders. What did I say? <laughs> oh, the Biden. Oh, yeah. Biden. yeah, the Biden's inauguration. <laughs> but yeah, I thought that was like three years ago. I'm like, it's 11 months ago. I'm like, wow, this year has been long. And typically when you get older, the years go by faster. Nah, this thing has felt like 10 years. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm losing hair. I got gray hair everywhere, too. Like, no, I'm ready for 2022 to come here right now. But I'm ending off on a good note, so. <laughs> For sure. This year has definitely crawled. Listen, guys, today's episode is brought to you by NetSuite. NetSuite is the number one cloud financial system to power your growth. Head to NetSuite.com slash locked on NCAA for a special end of year financing on the number one financial growing businesses for growing businesses. There it is. All right, guys. So, of course, we had to talk about the condiment bowl. We didn't call it the condiment bowl because the Mayo Duke's Mayo Bowl was having the Twitter world in a frenzy as we saw multiple people eating different uh, types of Oreos, eating some chicken. I don't even know. I was at the game, so I was in full, like, you know, mode of game time. But I saw on broadcast posts that there were a lot of people dunking stuff in mayonnaise, the spread of the media room, having waffles. Yahoo Sports College Football bet people to put mayonnaise on the waffle. I don't like, I love money, don't get me wrong, but not enough to put mayonnaise on nothing. Not, ugh, gross. See, I hate mayo. I hate actually mayo with a damn passion. <laughs> I think it's the worst trash economy <laughs> right, in front of, right in front of ranch. But I will say Duke's mayo mm. is the only thing I actually will have in my house because I cook with it. You ever had grilled, like a grilled cheese with oh. it? Like it's the butter you put on the, on the outside. It makes it like super crispy because of the oil. But I will say I love my Golic Jr., and I did try that. I have some Uncrustables in my, actually in my freezer. I did take one out. I, you know, I got it right in the air fryer. I dunked a little bit of mayo on there. And I'm not going to lie to you. That sweet. <laughs> it, 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 was, it actually was. It was pretty damn good. It was really odd because I can't stand mayo. And I'm like, wow, that's the one thing I actually will eat with that. So, listen, my goal is no. he's kind of a savant Drake. for that. He's, he's a trendsetter. I don't know what to talk about. The donut and the Oreo, I'm not doing that. That's disgusting. But, like, the pb and I'll give you. Why did you not take the film this? You should have had this ready. Where is the crustable? We're gonna when I go to break, we're gonna have to get you in a crustable, put some mayo in it before we end the show. What the heck? We should have well, well, because well, that's because you give me the heads up. You haven't watched The Office. You haven't watched what, was, what are the other two shows that you were dragged out on Twitter last Seinfeld. week? Seinfeld. I didn't watch Seinfeld. Have not seen the episode of Seinfeld. Well, Seinfeld. Have not part. seen Office. And what was the other one? Star Wars. I haven't seen Star Wars. Uh, Star Wars, like I mean, I'm a nerd, but like Star Wars, I can talk about the office. Like, the office, whole time though. I'm gonna try it. Everyone says get through season one and then keep going. So I'm gonna try it. Like I like dry humor, but also like I'm all about shows that are predominantly black. I can't even hold y'all. Like I love Living Single. I love Different World, Sister Sister, Moesha. Like that's stuff I grew up on. So like I identify myself in these characters, and even like the new stuff, Insecure, Harlem on. Uh, prime video like I think those are why I'm like I'm drawn to if I can like relate if I can have a moment I'm like okay but Star Wars I'm like I can't relate to daddy issues like Darth Vader I ain't never had no daddy issues so like I can't relate to that <laughs> no, sister sister was in my rotation and my dad loved Martin Martin was like he loves Martin Lawrence and that was like one of the big things in my house too but I mean, wish I watched the kid but Star Wars oh, that's like something that's it's old it's really really nerdy I like I could be passing that about the office you just got to get through season one because season one is terrible. I'll tell yeah. you that. It's really one of the worst TV shows I've ever seen okay. season one. But past that, I think you can handle that. I think that's pretty good. So, Okay. 
Well, hopefully by the end of the show, y'all might see Jersey Drake. If you're watching on YouTube, have some mayo. But it pretty much, we got to talk about mayonnaise because that was the most exciting part of the game. Carolina lost, well, I should say South Carolina beat North Carolina because there's a little bit of confusion on which Carolina is which. All right, 38 to 21. Shout out to Joyner for having a quarterback day. He was not a quarterback, you know, on paper, but he switched over for the sake of needing people in a transfer, opting out, all of that good stuff. And he led the team to a dominant victory. It's as if Coach Bateman said, I really don't want my job as a defensive coordinator for the Tar Heels. And the team said, Okay, let's let's show you why you shouldn't have this job. I just more of the same. Nothing's changing. Coaches aren't going to get different. Everything, I don't care how many five-star recruits you have, if you can't coach them, it's not going to do anything for you. I love Dre Bly. I think he's a great man. I think he's great at recruiting in the Virginia area, but maybe he should just be a consultant and not a coach. I don't know. We can have that conversation. But I'm not here to take nobody's job. All I'm saying is you can't keep doing the same thing and expecting different results. That's insanity by definition. I can't put it any better than myself at all, especially because UNC's run defense was kind of like the worst part of your defense. And USC lost like probably their top two running backs, and one of them being Zachondre White, who was the, their bulk leader actually at running back, which is kind of y'all got ran over a lot. And also with San- a record high day, Drake, a record high season high day on backups. That's embarrassing. Period. I'm, you know what? I'm not gonna do this today. We're not doing this today. So you go for it. You talk about it. Mm-mm. Nah, I mean, just like it's it was disappointing. <laughs> the, the way, I, in my personal opinion, I think Mac Brown made more co- so coach that game so he didn't get the mayo dunked on him because it made no sense to me getting the play calling at all whatsoever. <laughs> I mean, they dropped the they dropped the damn bucket on Shane Beamer's head, so I, that's perfectly fine for Mac Brown's like almost like eighty, so it's like that definitely. Oof. Can you imagine Mac Brown having the mayo bowl dunked on his head? He would have had probably a welt afterwards, so it was probably all better, you know. But I will say, I recommend. I know we're all about women power and strength, but, you know, you got to get some women who can lift up, you know, the jar of mayo. You can't really have people knocking it on people's heads. I know Beamer can bounce back. He's probably in his 40s. He's good to go. But my guy Mac would have been out. They had to call the ambulance. Oh, 100%. That old, that old, that old. But, <laughs> but then like was, they, they hit him on that head. <laughs> yeah, no, they, yeah, they bopped him in the back of the head, too. I'm like, ooh, that, like, that hurt. That definitely hurt. He, like, he, he rubbed that off. Like, that definitely hurt. But, I mean, that was. He was concussed. Was, the game was just not fun to watch in my personal. And I have a lot of friends yeah. and you were there and I have a lot of friends actually that are um, South Carolina fans, South Carolina boosters. I was talking to them the entire game and they they thought they were about to be boat race because they had nobody coming in at all. And then they see that they were watching Sam Howell and Sam Howell had a very pedestrian day. And this is something that Max kind of brought up a few times on blocked on uh, Seminoles where on the big games where UNC needs to, you know, perform very, very well or where they're near, near double digit favorites, which they were, I think at the closing, they lost. And not only did they lose, they lost in embarrassing fashion. You think of FSU the past two years. You think of yesterday. You think of earlier in the year. So it's kind of like, what is Sam Howell when the lights are super bright? So now it's going to be really interesting to see how he performs in the NFL when you don't get a lot of leeway when it comes to messing up and not performing underneath you know, lights, especially when it comes to people's paychecks. Well, you know, I don't think it's Sam's fault. I think it's the damn horrible offensive line that's supposed to be veterans that's who it. are supposed to be able to, you know, give Sam a little bit of time. Like, yes, I think that he does not do well under pressure when he's in the pocket. Like, that's something he certainly has to work on. But you've seen the progress of him not trying to force a play, live to see another down. He has improved mightily in that. And his deep ball accuracy is chef's kiss, bar none. But I agree. I think when it comes to RPOs, he definitely has to figure out, like, holding onto the ball too long, trying to get your your running back to go ahead and make a play, and they get swallowed up in the backfield. It's something to where I'm like, okay, Sam, we got to grow out of that. Like, oh, I'm going to do something. But he also tried to do a lot on his own, try to play hero. And it worked, you know, during the year, but it's not going to work against a defense who's very hype about things. They already feel like they can beat you. And going into the second half, I was like, put it away. Let's just, let's just end this bad boy. Make the bleeding stop. And now I blame y'all for, I'm not going to hear USC fans for the entire offseason. They're going to go 10 and 2. <laughs> they're going to win the East with Spencer Rattler. And now we're all going to be subject to that. So thank you, Mac Brown, for having me and my entire event to be blown up for the rest of the season, the rest of the year. <laughs> We also got to talk about the Peach Bowl here. The Pittsburgh Panthers had 
quite the showing, right? Not having your star quarterback be in this bad boy, but he was at the game. I would love to get your opinions on what you felt about having Kenny Pickett there, but not suiting up and then having the second in command go down and having to play with a third string quarterback. That's a lot going on there for the Pittsburgh Panthers. But guys, this is it. The putt to win the tournament. If you sink it, the championship is yours. But on your backswing, your hat falls over your eyes. Is this how you're running your business? Poor visibility because you're still relying on spreadsheets and outdated finance software. To see the full picture, you need to upgrade to NetSuite by Oracle. Over 20,000, 28,000, let's get all of them in there. Businesses already use NetSuite. For the new year, NetSuite has a financial program for those ready to upgrade at netsuite.com slash locked. Head to netsuite.com slash L-O-C-K-E-D for the special one-of-a-kind financing offer on the number one financial system for growing businesses. Again, that's netsuite.com slash L-O-C-K-E-D. Jersey Drake in the building, Locked on Seminoles host. Make sure you guys follow all of his content there. He also has a group, Knowles Anonymous, where he gets it down with all of those Seminoles who are you know, ready for a new year. I honestly thought that we're going to have some Seminoles trying to throw their hat in the ring when it came to making up some games. If they wanted to play NC State in the Holiday Bowl, I wouldn't have been mad at it. But I know everybody's probably on vacation at this point. Let the season be done. But we had another team that was able to play a bowl game because it was down bad for the ACC at, at the first half of this. Four teams pulled out of bowl games. Then you had Carolina not show up. You had Clemson, only one so far who's won in the Cheez-It Bowl. And then you had Pittsburgh. Help us, Lord. Lose to Michigan State. 21 to 31 and it was all Michigan State until it wasn't and then it was all Pittsburgh till it wasn't I think it was just very up and down game I think personally that coach Tucker out coach coach Narduzzi but it's hard to play with the third string quarterback in a primetime game at Chick-fil-a Peach Bowl you know all the pressures on how did you feel about Kenny Pickett being there being in the booth but not necessarily being on the field did you feel like that his energy was really missing from the pe- the Panther sideline I mean, I think it is because it's kind of harder to see that Kenny Pickett was your Heisman contending quarterback, right? And he's the one, he's the main reason why you won a majority of your games. That's kind of also that's why I took Michigan State minus three and a half. And luckily, the linebacker took that back for some reason and covered the game. So <laughs> thank you, my man, and shout prayers out to prayer, Pit, Pit, uh, Pit Bears plus three and a half. But with Pickett, I have no problem with him staying on the sideline of the game and not playing. I mean, mainly because it's kind of like. To me, that's something that's a discussion between the coaching staff and the players themselves. If they wanted them there and they allowed them to come back and say, hey, we want you to be here still rooting us as a cheerleader, I'm fine with that because that's, not, that's you know, not my thing. It's not my business. So it's like, hey, like if that's, if that's what mm-hmm. they want to do, that's fine. I know Brees Hall did the same thing for Iowa State the day before against Clemson. So it's kind of like I, I get why people are upset because he's, he's he opted out he's not playing, so why are you still there? But it's kind of like if if the players and the coaching staff doesn't have, doesn't have a problem with it, then quite frankly, why should we? Because we're not the one playing. That's that's very fair. And I think that, you know, overall, Pitt was definitely holding it down as the ACC champs. They, you know, had some really good plays, had some great defensive takeaways and some pick six act or fumble recovery, rather, you should say, and for six. And I think it's just ultimately they, to me, are the team that everyone should be aware of or not sleep on, as I feel like we did this past season when it comes to the Coastal. Now, do I think it's going to be Clemson back on top for the ACC? Remains to be seen because a lot of people are in the conversation to take that top spot of the Atlantic. You're going to have Boston College coming back with Phil Jakovic. You're going to have NC State with Devin Leary. Like, there's a lot of good things happening on that side. But I think that makes it for good football. I'm tired of the the super uh, non-competitive side of the Atlantic division. Yeah, I... I think now we're going into a year where the parity is more even off, I think, forever before for ACC football teams. Uh, and also with Pitt, with the Coastal, like people forget that Keaton Slovis, the former USC quarterback who was a potential first-round pick, is transferring to Pitt. So it's going to be really interesting to see how yeah. he's able to replace a Kenny Pick moving forward because I think Jordan Aston, he he's still there, going to be there for next year or is he gone for after this year? So it remains to be seen. I've heard from sources, we love to use our sources, that it depends on the offensive coordinator and who is coming in. So I don't know. Okay. And he like, should come back. He should because he's but a why monster. why would you come back after? But also, if you've already won the Blitnikoff Award, like why would you come back? Uh, that's something that where he's probably going to enter his name for scouts, look at him, give him a grade. And if he's not getting anything higher than a first-round grade, I think he should come back. I just think he, the kid is that mm-hmm. damn good, that damn talented. He might like that. So part of me as the fan thinks he can come back to, to increase his stock. 
But the person of me that, yeah. you know, as an attorney, as like an agent, I'll be like, no, I think you need to like leave now because you can still get, you know, decent money in the second round. You can still, you know, avoid injury and you can start actually start preparing because you do already have that talent. And you might get better development right. actually at the next level because Brennan Marion, the pit wide receiver, is gone. So it's kind of, and that was one of the reasons yeah. why his development was so good. So that'll be interesting to see. That's true. We also have a couple games remaining as we're looking towards the. Whew, let me make sure we're right. We have Wake Forest playing today against Rutgers, and that's the last one for the ACC. So holding it down in the Gator Bowl, the Tax Slayer Gator Bowl, the Demon Deacons will play at 11 a.m. So we're going to pop this out for you guys at the time of recording. Let's hope that the Demon Deacons can get one more off. You know, I think they are have the opportunity to have 11 win se- 11 game win season so that will be exciting for them as they have sam hartman return i know jaquiri robertson is taking his house to the nfl but they also have some really good opportunities in front of them in terms of next season yeah i think also with wake forest i think sam hartman i can officially say he's coming back and then dave clausen has like a really this is probably the best wake forest team his team has had since probably the rise standard days in the early 2000s right so (laughs) yeah I am really excited to see how they kind of respond today because, like, it's – when you play at Texas A&M, you kind of want to put your best foot forward. If you – like, no offense to Rutgers fans, but it's a, step, it's a very, very big step down in competition when you go up against the Rutgers with Wake Forest. So it's kind of like you're going to need to make sure these kids have this extra motivation to go out there and play extremely hard because also, I mean, all people will say these bowl games are meaningless. Like, I mean, they are meaningless in the sense that you don't add an extra championship. You don't extra – you only add an extra W, but you got extra exposure – there's going to be players that, you know, weren't starting this year, but will probably be starting next year. They kind of get their name out there. That's where we have the two early mock drafts for 2023. You get them a lot of that from these kind of games. So I'm expecting mm-hmm. Wake Forest to, you know, do great for Cam Lemons to bro. I know he's at the game right now. They're probably going to beat them by 20, 30 points because Rutgers, Rutgers just isn't a good team. There's a reason why they were 5-7 and seven. they got in for APR. So battle of the nerds. Mm. We'll see how it goes out. <laughs> no doubt i will say as much as we junk as people talked about clemson this season how they don't lack of have it they're the only acc team that won a comp or won a bowl game so they did kind of hold it down for the squad for the conference as we all predicted that they would but maybe not in this sense yeah uh, i mean uh, <laughs> i think iowa state's one of the weaker teams that they people played i mean okay i guess mel tucker is probably i mean you saw the little the thread you had going on with sam or i'm more like the um fsu twitter follow that Mel Tucker is probably one of the best head coaches in the, in the league right now. I mean, he was down by 10 points and found a way to beat Pitt. I mean, come with Peyton Thorne and no Kenneth Walker III. So, to me, Clemson had an easier road to their win because Iowa State particularly isn't that great, and they were missing their star mm-hmm. running back, and the game was so close. But you're right. I mean, they still are the only ones with the dub. And we can laugh at the SEC all, they, all we want. They also only have one W, so it's kind of like we need the win today to make sure we separate ourselves from that pack. You know what? I absolutely agree with that. That is a good point because we it definitely did not mean that much in the mayonnaise bowl yesterday. I'm still bitter. Don't worry <laughs> about it. All right, guys. It's the new year, so that means New Year's resolutions. If yours is about getting fit or eating healthier, make sure you include Built Bar in your plan. You guys can hit up my Instagram. I just posted about my fitness journey and how I'm trying to get right. And Built Bar is the protein that takes that makes sure that we are going to get together for 2022. It makes it easier to stick to your resolution because it tastes good and you'll want to eat it unlike other protein bars, right? Sometimes they can be a little chalky, a little gross. You just, I want something that's decent, right? You don't have to dip it in mayo, but you definitely can have you a nice 100% covered in real chocolate built bar. Most built bars contain a lot of extra calories up to 240 with 30 grams of sugar, but not built bar, 130 calories four grams of sugar, four net carbs. So here's an idea for the new year. Go to all your secret treat stashes and throw a little Bilt Bar in there. So you can just get used to the habit of eating those Bilt Bars so they can be yummy and tasty, feel good as you're getting ready for your new journey. New year, new you. Okay, but we're going to get right. So we're going to have a little, if you want to hit me up at Keenan's D Cooper on Twitter, let me know how your fitness journey is going. Go to built.com, use promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your order. That Again, that's L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5 for 15% off at built.com. All right, we're wrapping up the show here today. Glad our faces have finally come back to the the show. Make sure you guys hit up at Locked on ACC on Twitter. You can follow us personally on our handles there below. All right, Zuzi Drake, Locked on Seminoles host. 
what are you feeling about basketball as we're heading into year 2022? It feels like more of the same. I'm just hoping that we don't have a tournament cancellation. Like I think the way they played bowl games at this point, we're going to have to just roll with things. I talked with AJ Black on Wednesday saying, listen, we're already breaking all the rules. CDC said y'all on your own. Why do we keep trying to like have some sort of policies in place? It just seems, you know, asinine to me. Let's just roll. Let's roll. We're, we, we don't, we clearly don't care that much. Let's just roll. I mean, like we ball, right? I mean, I mean, that's kind of what been the rule of for a little bit. Um, yeah, yeah, it's just the way. I think Dave Doran said it really well with the NCAA. How he kind of, I, the name is escaping me. How what he referred to them as their acronym as, but yeah, it's it's really funny because I don't think we'll go to cancellation because the problem with that is no clue March, at all. No clue at all. That's really that's NCAA really NCAA is fitting. no clue at all. That's really damn <laughs> Um I'm joking. I know. I'm kind of, but like, I think with that, it's more <laughs> March Madness brings in so much damn money for not only yeah. the NCAA, but for the schools as a whole. And I think it's like, in, it's like hundreds of millions of dollars that it brings in for literally a two to three week tournament. And not only that, it brings in money to where each location is at and for each school. And I think the NCAA has mm-hmm. kind of seen that and what they, they were experienced that once and like, no, no, we're not going to do that again. Because if we're being honest, last year, the tournament also had like several cancellations as well. I think FSU missed, I think, eight or nine games with COVID cancellations actually heading into around the same time that we're having now. So it's kind of like, I think they, they're looking at the opportunity cost right now to see how much how effective it will be actually if they do cancel the games out. I think we'll still have a tournament primarily because at the end of the day, the all my dollar wins out. And that's kind of like how it's seen out at the end of the day, unfortunately. That's, that's super true. I mean, we could talk about college football playoffs and the fact that we're playing games despite, you know, I haven't heard anything about cases or any issues among the top four teams because they know how much money would be lost involved if you don't have these four teams playing. So I think that's going to be more of the same there for the NCAA. Wednesday, though, we had a couple games. Syracuse beat Cornell, but Wake Forest and Louisville had a great matchup. The 73-69, a little shot clock issue Towards the end of the game, we gotta love those ACC refs and the miscues. Gotta love it. Oh, NC you love State it. came up, <laughs> came up short against Miami. You know, NC State and the way they just can't finish games at times is just so disappointing. But you have a lot of youth there, so there is promise. So I'm just hoping that you know Keats and squad can get a little extra time now that they can figure it out. Of course, you had the postponement games between Duke, Clemson, Florida State, Boston College, Virginia Tech, and North Carolina. So you'll see some action here today, January, or excuse me, tomorrow, January 1st, 2022. Florida State will play NC State. So can NC State finish a game against the Seminoles? It'll be very exciting to see at 4 p.m. on ACC Network. Jersey Drake, how you feeling? We need to win this game. I think we should win this game. Um, <laughs> okay. And I've, I mean, the loss against South Carolina was bad. That's a, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. South Carolina's a bad team. But then we beat mm-hmm. Lipscomb, I think, by 30 points, which is something that was much needed. And ironically, I'm a big, you know, not analogy guy, but like trend guy. Last year, FSU was kind of struggling a little bit, and then they had a COVID pause. And this mm-hmm. year, FSU struggling a little bit, had another COVID pause. So, and we're going back against an NC State team that, in my opinion, isn't very good. I mean, they're, I use Bartorvik. They're second to last in the ACC by events metrics. And that's a team that we, like you said, they can't close out games. They, there's, they, I mean, they're in games mm-hmm. they shouldn't be in, but eventually their true colors kind of show out and they don't close the games out. Now, FSU, I think they need to be better with shooting the ball. Their three point shooting is getting a little bit better, but we need players like an Anthony Polite and Matt, Matthew Cleveland. Malik Osborne has been great, but we need him to show a little more because I don't want to see Caleb Mills take 20 shots and make only five. Mm-hmm. Caleb Mills is a slasher. He's going to shoot her. Like, that's the bread and butter. But, like, I don't need to see my man take 20 shots and make only five. You're not Deion Waiters, man. You need to stop shooting a little bit when you can't make the basket. But I think we should win this yeah. game handily because I think we play Louisville next and then Wake Forest. And those games are going to be tough because Wake Forest with four separate transfers looks like a completely different damn team from last year. They almost doubled their win total. Yeah, no doubt. And I think NC State is a very young team. They're a small team, but a small team that can't shoot. And that has to be like the clutch part of your game. Like if you're not yeah. going to have any big man, especially with the loss of Manny Bates, you've got to be able to get the rock. you got to be able to make the free throws. Those are essential. You also have Wake Forest playing Miami at six on ESPNU. So you can check that out. Miami coming off a big win. Wake Forest coming off a loss and feeling like they should have won. So that should be a good game there. Followed by Virginia and Syracuse. I think it's a game Syracuse should take. But you never know with these um, Virginia – Virginia Cavaliers. And then Sunday, you'll have Boston College in North Carolina. 
12 at 12 noon and then Louisville and Georgia Tech. So that'll be your weekend the cap of men's games that you don't want to miss. And on the women's side, you know, I love to make sure y'all are, you know, in the know. Okay. In the, Shout out to uh, South Carolina, to still talking about the Mayo Bowl. Their women's team got taken down by Missouri the other night. That game was so awesome. I'm not sad. <laughs> that, that game was, was awesome. Sick. I saw that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was one of those things you had to sacrifice. So they sacrificed the great football win for their women to get one loss a season. And I was at the bar, and of course, they were talking about how great all of their programs are now. And I was like, Don Staley is definitely on a mission. But I will say, one of the you know ladies I was sitting at the table, she's like, I think they have to have one loss just to really feel it. Because I think whenever a team is undefeated, they don't really know how to like have the rhythm of coming out, you know, out of a loss, trying to really be hungry. So one loss now, I'm sure they'll be fine by it. Shout out to the Heels for staying undefeated, beating Syracuse 79-43. Louisville won. NC State held it down. Virginia Tech and Wake Forest. Great games there. And then Saturday, you'll see Boston College and in action. And then Sunday, you've got Georgia Tech playing Louisville, Notre Dame playing Duke, Florida State playing Syracuse, Miami playing Virginia, Virginia Tech playing Wake Forest, and Clemson playing North Carolina. So a lot of great games over the weekend, ACC matchups from both men and women. You don't want to miss it because I think the ACC, especially from the women's side, is something to be positive about. you got six teams in the top 25. And then with the men, we're still trying to figure out if there are going to be more than four teams in that tournament. I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. Jersey Jake, what you think? I mean, we'll see, but like, I mean, there's still like strong teams actually at the ACC. I mean, UNC, I mean, you guys have three losses, but your three losses are to top 25 teams. And that's something not to yeah. hang your head about at all whatsoever. Uh, Florida State, For I think sure. actually where it's like I said, like January is the time where like you see what teams really are. And I'm kind of Coach Hamilton, I think is someone that, you know, has been preaching patience with these kids because they're super young. And I would be more worried if I'm Virginia, primarily because their defense mm. is typically something that kind of helps them out. Their defense is almost like not even in the top half actually of the country. And they're, and their yeah. slow-paced offense does not settle well to get does not pair well with that to actually be super successful over the course of the year. So I don't know what Tony Ben needs to do, but he needs to figure something out because they can't score really for a damn lick. <laughs> well, you heard it here first. I think that's you know a very important nugget, especially because a lot of Virginia fans are sitting here confused because they're used to such having such dominant progress. But hey, once you start figuring somebody out, it doesn't take long. Like you understand this is going to be low scoring, you're going to have to shoot well, all that kind of stuff, play really good defense. You figure that out, and then you're like, okay, now it's not a surprise, and maybe we can take over this team. And that's what clearly people have done. Not the same skill set of players, maybe necessarily, but still, it's the same sort of mo. So maybe he'll adjust things as good coaches do and it will remain to be seen how we work things out jersey drake it's always a pleasure i love that we get to do the last show of 2021 together it has been a joy to have you as my co-host especially on fridays when we're feeling good freestyle friday where we let things roll it has been you know the joy to just have you make things a lot lighter than what you know this world is giving us right now so thank you so Aww, much for all that you. you do for me of course and can you please remind these folks of where they can go into the new year and listen to you of all your work Okay, so you know I look forward to every single Friday specifically because I get the coolest <laughs> Fridays with you. Trust me. First off, Friday, we can have, like keep it light, keep it fun. But, folks, if you want to follow yeah. me, follow me at Tally underscore underscore Drake, as you see below. Follow my co-host at MaxMovie17. You can follow the podcast at LO underscore Seminoles, all our either our podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, wherever you get your podcast from. As Kansas, you know, plugged in earlier, follow us at Knowles Anonymous. That's our community or membership where we kind of get listener questions, engage with fans. That's kind of where we got our topics for the shows coming up. Also, we're on YouTube, so make sure you know you ding the little bell for whenever we drop new content. And feliz año nuevo to todo mi gente por allá. And uh, Candace, you know, I love also wrapping up the year with you because trust me, it's been a blast being your Friday uh, Friday wingman right here. No doubt. Guys, be smart and safe out here as we're going into the new year. Of course, there's all these sports that we want to see. The only way we can see them is we do our part. So do whatever you got to do to make sure that we can do that. Happy New Year. We look forward to talking to you on Monday and recapping all these games with Kenton Gibbs of Locked On Wolfpack. For Candace Cooper and Jersey Jake for the last time in 2021. Until next time.